Today I'm going to help you do a Saab 9.3 ignition switch LED upgrade. When the 9.3 SS first came out in 2003 model year, the ignition switch module had LEDs inside that lit up the words lock off on an ST in green, the same as the rest of the dash. But that feature was dropped in 2004 model year and never returned. However, they dropped the feature purely by deleting the LEDs and their resistors off the PCB inside the ISM. And since we can know what the 2003 model year had for the values of the resistors and the type of LED, we can take a later ISM and we can retrofit LEDs and resistors to it and hey presto, it will light up. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing to do is take the ignition module apart so that you've got the uh, board out so that you can work on it. Now I have already shown you how to do that in detail in another video, so I will link to that in the description. Oh, if there's anyone out there who would like this feature, let me know and I'll get a second hand ISM, modify it and we'll do a, an exchange. Here's a picture of the PCB and here are the details showing the values of the resistors and the type of resistor. And this is where the LEDs go. I'll put in the description links to those on mouses. Before you do anything else, make sure you've got some means of holding the board steady. Also make sure that you've got some fine non-static tweezers. These are stainless steel electronics tweezers. You'll also need a soldering iron with a very fine tip because uh, these components really are tiny. There's my finger in comparison to the size of an LED. Fortunately, because of the way these uh, PCBs are made, all of the contact points for these components are already tinned. So prep the board by applying flux to all of the component solder points. Now, if your eyesight's anything like mine, a pair of magnifying glasses or maybe even a loop would be a good idea. The LEDs come in a little strip package like this. Use your tweezers to remove the LEDs one at a time. For that, you'll need a pair of fine nose tweezers. The polarity of these LEDs is indicated by a little cutout on the corner of the top of the LED. And the diagram I showed you a few moments ago shows you where to orientate the cutout. In this instance, I want the cutout in the bottom right hand corner as we're looking at it. So I'm going to put this one here and I've checked that it's orientated correctly. So having applied some flux to the solder point, I also dip my uh, soldering iron tip in some flux as well to make sure it's clean. Get close in with your jeweler's loop and a pair of your tweezers. Make sure that the LED is firmly held down against each of the solder pads. Bring your soldering iron in and solder one side down. Press the other side down to make sure that it's in contact with the solder. And same again. If you've got a test meter with leads that have got fine points on them, you can test the LEDs after you've uh, put them on the board to make sure that they're working. It is possible to destroy them with the heat from the soldering iron. If... And repeat that operation for the four LEDs. Now, if you're particularly uh, pedantic and you want to make sure that you've got exactly the same brightness of LEDs on your ISM as you have in your instrument cluster, then you could get a second-hand instrument cluster, perhaps one that's busted for other reasons, get the board out of it and rescue some LEDs off that board because these LEDs are slightly brighter than the original LEDs. Here's a demonstration of the uh, comparison in brightness between the original LEDs and the ones I bought from Mouser. I've actually got a small amount of window tint left over. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is cut a small piece of window tint to fit into there so that it'll dim the uh, LEDs down ever so slightly. But these LEDs will go up and down in brightness with the instrument cluster if you use the dimming function on the night panel. Once you've got your four LEDs on and you've checked you've got the correct polarity and that they all still work after you've done the soldering, now it's time to put the resistors on. Now the resistors are not polarity sensitive, so you can put them on either way around, but you must make sure to get the correct value resistors in the correct places. So resistors are a little bit tricky as well. Now the resistors will come in little packets with the value of the resistor that's inside marked on. I think it's safe to assume that Mouser will have got the values correct. Nevertheless, I checked mine and they were correct. But here's a picture showing the color bands on each of the resistors so that you can check yours. You might find you'll need a magnifying glass. Actually, you will find you need a magnifying glass. <laughs> And they come in the same kind of strip packaging as the uh, LEDs do. And again, take them out one at a time. 
Now for the resistors, I'm putting a little extra tin on each of the contact pads. Not much, just a little. Only because the resistors are round. And reapply a bit of flux again. You'll notice I'm applying it from a tub using a very small cut down paintbrush. You can buy little syringes of flux. That's probably the best way of doing it. The technique for the resistors is exactly the same as that that you used for the LEDs. This number three LED is the one that's got the really small resistor. You can see it sat on top of my finger there. It gives you some idea of just how small it is. So obviously uh, this is very fine work, so do be very careful. And also be very careful not to lose the resistor. It would be very easy for that to jump off your finger and just disappear. For that reason, I would suggest that if you're buying these to do yourself, it's probably worth buying two of this resistor to make sure you've got a spare one. And once you've got all four resistors and all four LEDs in place, if you put your multimeter probes across one of the LEDs, all four should light up, which gives you some confidence that it will work once it's all back in the car. And whilst you're here, these two rows of connections there and those two rows of connections there are edge pins for the uh, connectors to and from the board. So while I'm at it, I'm just going to go through and re-solder those and make sure that they're in good order. Give the board a good clean down with electrical contact cleaner and then apply conformal coating on both sides of the board. Something I did notice about this board is that the, there was no conformal coating from the factory, which I regard as very bad form especially considering the position of this board in the car to where it is it could easily get drinks spilled on it when i was in charge of developing the new premium massage for land rover the pcbs in the massage control system had to pass tests regarding uh, condensation resistance which meant that they needed to be coated despite the fact that they're inside a plastic case and that is fitted inside the seat structure which is inside the car i mean to be fair land rovers of course are off-road vehicles so there is always the danger of more water ingress than you perhaps would expect with a normal vehicle and this may even be why some problems with isms occur on this these cars so this is something even if you're not putting leds on there uh, on your ism if you're just cleaning your ism up i suggest you do this anyway obviously don't put any conformal coating on the uh, switch contact tracks which is why i'm choosing to brush it on rather than spray it on shine a light on it and make sure that you haven't missed anywhere these leds are moisture sensitive devices they come from mouser in a in a sealed packet with some uh, silicate in to protect them from moisture during transportation so protecting them from moisture in the car is something that's well worthwhile and give you conformal coating a couple of hours to dry before putting the whole thing back together now put your ignition switch module back together again i have shown you how to do that in some detail so i'll link to that in the description also in the description I'll link to the components from Mauser that I used uh, along with some other bits and bobs that you might need. If you got value from this video please consider supporting the channel and I shall see you next time.